Hello and welcome to Awake Ones. My name's Lorraine Flarty. I'm Alexandra Winman. I'm Sally Points at Nash. I'm Millian Abertin Carlson. And today we're going to talk to you about dancing. <laughs> <laughs> much, much to Sally's delight. <laughs> yeah. Dancing, my favourite subject. Yeah. Over to you. <laughs> I think you should start, Sally. Talk about what is it about? dancing around this subject. I'm going to go to you, Lorraine. You're always dancing. I am always dancing. She's always inviting everyone to go dancing. Um, all sorts of types of dancing, whether it's ecstatic dance or Ciroc dancing, which people quite often look at me. Interpretive dance. Interpretive dance. Rhythmic <laughs> dance. Oh, and my husband likes a bit of expressive dance, expressive, but yeah. only to communicate what he cannot with words. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, to my amusement. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I have to say, opening this up, I once went to a wedding and saw the best, best man speech I have ever seen in my entire life because he did the whole thing through expressive dance. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. yeah, it was absolutely Amazing. incredible. It was, yeah, it, he got the full marks for that one. It was brilliant. But I wanted to talk about dancing because movement and not just as a form of exercise, but actually as something that traditionally has been used in all kinds of ceremonies and in all kinds of rituals. You know, the shamans throughout time have mm-hmm. always involved movement. And whether dance is putting you into a trance-like state, which can often do, the, the Sufis, and, uh, you know, they're, they're very rhythmic movement. We went, when we were in Egypt, we went and saw the, the, the Sufis doing the dancing show, and obviously trance has escalated into the, the clubbing scene, which is not quite so spiritual, but, but sometimes pretty cosmic for a lot of people there. But just the joy and the pleasure that you get out of that movement, I love dancing and I think it's something that we neglect at our peril actually and my parents who've always done ballroom dancing because in Ireland that's what you do not that formal mm. you know head stuff around but just waltzing and fox trots. and I watch sometimes the old couples that are in their 70s and sometimes 80s who have spent their whole life dancing with one another and it's like poetry yeah it really is like poetry when you see these two people moving and it's mesmerising sometimes because they are literally dancing like one being. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they just know, they're totally in sync and, and one knows exactly where the other one's going and it's, I think it's an art that we've lost. And even in relationships, I'm joking about this, so I'm not very good at being told what to do in any shape or form. I'm not very good at being, you know, the, the, the woman that's allowed to be led or or will allow anyone to do that. But in dance, especially partner dancing, you have to. And I think in a lot of relationships as well, I think the role of the man to be the, the you know, a lead and the woman to be the, kind of, you know, to go with the flow and be the, the movement in it, it's actually good to step into that role. I think sometimes. that's where I've got stuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. I, I really struggled with it to start with. Being six foot two since right. I was 14. Right. School discos, any kind of dances. I mean, I don't have this hand eye leg coordination thing right. down <laughs> anyway. But even it, you know, and there are times where you just lose those inhibitions and you dance regardless. But yeah. being so much bigger than those around me typically, mm. it's so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else makes a bit of a faux pas on the dance floor, you don't right. necessarily see yeah. it. But People do stare at me a lot, and there's not really anything I can do about that. No. Um, and then also, if you're dancing with a partner, when like when you're 14 and six foot two, there is nobody to match you. Right. On height, you know. And I remember a school disco. There was this <laughs> this guy that I was kind of seeing. He was the smallest guy in the in the year. Of course. And I was. It didn't start like that. The summer holidays, we came back, and I suddenly was this. Oh, so you've been similar in height, not as small, but similar. Yeah. Um, And we danced at a school disco, and he just was up like this around my waist. Oh, so cute. Which maybe it's absolutely fine for some people, but for me, it just wasn't a look that. No, it wasn't a good look. Um, you know, big feet treading on people's feet. That I can't do that. I should almost be the man lead because right. of the size, and maybe that's what has scarred me when it comes to dancing oh. and the lack of coordination. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
Time to start a tour people's dance troupe. Yeah. <laughs> no, I went to Germany for, um, it was a tour people convention, and I went for the experience, and at the end, I was one of the shortest people there. There was 200 people, roughly, and they all started waltzing at high speed. You know, and men that are sort of seven foot two, seven foot three, waltzing with women that are six foot five, six foot six. I mean, it was quite dangerous. I mean, after a few drinks, it, it yeah. was very animated. Yeah. It was it, yeah. it, you, 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 you did this when they went past. It yeah. was you know they were wow. they were dancers. They yes. knew how to dance, but just the sheer size. Even for me at six two, it was it was quite intense. Yeah, absolutely. It's like being up on Sirius, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Back in my hometown. <laughs> and you were, you, you weren't tempted to go out and have a go. Uh, no, no, I, I went outside. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Like <laughs> Do, no, just no. I went out with some friends of mine, but just so that you, we got out of the the part <laughs> of the serious dance crowd. Yeah. Oh my god. Mm. Oh, yeah. I think this is maybe also why we feel inhibited sometimes when we yeah. see people doing a perfect dance, you know, that we don't trust or don't don't dare to go and just feel what we want to express. Let um, loose. Yeah. 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 And for me, that's the thing about dancing is that there is no right or wrong way yeah. to dance. For me, you listen to music and then, but obviously this is probably unique to me, I quite like not partner dancing because that would not be, <laughs> not be safe, but... If I'm dancing by myself, I quite often just close my eyes, and it is a bit like a meditation, because I just go in and I listen to, I don't know, different beats, and, and pick up on a certain element of the move, of the music, and then my body is just moving to whatever the music is saying, whatever the music is doing, so it really is like a, I don't know, it is like a meditation, but what's... <laughs> We went. Well, I, this is just reminding me. Lorraine and I went to a cacao, oh yeah, uh, ecstatic dance night. Uh, was it a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, about a month ago. And I mean, I just run my goddess <laughs> workshop that day. Yeah. So we're doing all this in-depth room work, and we got there and they handed out the cacao. It's like in a tiny cup like this, and. I took two sips of it. Like he said, make an intention, take a sip. Don't drink it all. So I went, okay, I'm not going to drink it all. So I had a sip. I was like, oh, that's really nice. Made the second intention, had another sip, and put it down thinking I'll come back to it. And then we got pulled into the circle and the dancing started and I went back to get the rest of my cacao. Someone had nicked it. Someone had taken off with it. But I didn't need it. Probably just as well. I probably <laughs> was hallucinating all night on two wow. sips of cacao. Because of the dance, I, I literally just went within and I've been doing spiritual work all day. I was tripping off my head <laughs> on two sips of pure nice. cacao. I, I, honestly, I thought they'd spiked it. Um, and they hadn't. They hadn't. The whole they crop. hadn't. And, and I had like I had light coming out my fingertips. I was I was at one point I was like dancing with all these like I thought they were robots. I was like arm in arm with like lines of these silver robots, and I was like, are these like cyborgs? And then I went, oh my god, it's the Tin Man, the Tin Man. And then all the Tin Men opened up their hearts and were showing me their hearts. And I was like, it was the best dance experience I've ever had. But, you know, like I've always been one for using my imagination and I think dance is a good way of tapping into your imagination. And it, I kind of am reminded of kind of my first experience of dance as a, as a tiny child and being about three or four years old. And my sister had started ballet lessons and she turned up in the living room in the pink tutu and everything and my eyes lit up and I was like, oh, I want to do that. And she was doing this little recital for mom and dad and some of our family friends. So I just launched into my own <laughs> childlike interpretive dance. I can do that. I can do ballet. And I think I was actually wearing one of those um, those little sleeping bag suits where you don't have any feet. So I was <laughs> like, like, in a sleeping bag suit on my knees doing all these arm movements. I must have, you know, must have been a prima ballerina in a past life, I think, because it was just amazing in my mind. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was a dancing mermaid. I was a dancing mermaid. I was exactly yes. <laughs> And it was, you know, no <laughs> accident or... <laughs> The, the connections, because I used to do the same thing. When I was growing up, I was desperate to be a ballerina. Mm. Absolutely desperate. I was obsessed with anything. Swan Lake, Tchaikovsky was my favourite composer anyway. So whenever I would hear 
any of his music, I would suddenly be pirouetting and spinning <laughs> around. And where we lived, there, were, there just weren't classes. Well, we were in the Bolshoi together in, in our Bolshoi together. together. <laughs> definitely a part of it. We were definitely in it together. But well, we were not selling so No, maybe. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a different time, maybe. But I used to, even though I'd never had a band lesson, because there weren't any classes, and there weren't at the, at the time, you know, going from South London, there just wasn't any provision for it, really. So I never did a class ever. But I would take, whenever we went anywhere, the record, the Tchaikovsky album, and when we would arrive at, at friends' houses or family houses, I would make them put the record on, and then I would do performance. <laughs> Completely <laughs> made up. No idea Amazing. what I was doing. I know, but I would be there very confidently, turning and pirouetting, and yeah, convinced that I was. I did ballet. Did you? Did um, you know? <laughs> yeah, I did. I um, danced at the Royal Ballet. <gasps> And I don't like dancing. <laughs> <laughs> this is like that's amazing. Mm, yes, tell us more. Yeah, no, it's only when I was younger. I'm hiding my dance. No, it's when I was younger, and I was always in the middle to balance out the the aesthetic because mm. um, I was generally taller. Right. Um, but yeah. Amazing. But this is interesting. Like a lot of us girls, we grew up with ballet. I also used to do mm. ballet, or right. and then jazz dance and, and tap. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Jazz, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I used to make all of that up as well. Because I loved all the old movies, so, uh, you know, all of the old Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and all of the, the, the musicals that had dancing in, mm. I absolutely loved them. I always wanted to do that stuff. And then, obviously, it's very sad, but at a certain point I got to my early 30s and I was having a bit of a life change and I, did a, I ended up doing a two-year drama acting workshop or a course. And part of the course included dance and they actually had ballet classes so <laughs> purely for my inner child who had craved doing it I signed up to do ballet now obviously when you're 30 odd and you've had years of you know bad posture and it, your body is a certain way there was no way I was going to be a prima ballerina at that point I just wanted to go just to fulfill that need that desire to do it and it would have been amazing but my teacher was absolutely rigid and set and wanted everything done perfectly. Honey, that's all ballet teachers. Yeah. Ballet is the it's same as like going to church. Yes. Like, oh, it's please. awful. They yes. used to pull my bun because it yeah. wasn't good enough. They kick your feet. Yeah. It's horrible. So in the end, I, mean, I lasted two terms of it. And actually, to be honest, it was brilliant for my posture yeah. and for getting fit. I mean, I highly recommend it if anyone can bloody cope with it. Yeah. But it yeah. was boot camp. Yeah. But where is the fun? I, yeah, yeah, there was I no fun. Up, yeah. yeah, I took up ballet when I was 90, 18. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also wanted to be this ballerina again, but my teacher, a Russian lady, used to be a ballerina as well, yeah. it's what you said, oh, it's yeah. so strict, like, yeah. you lose the joy of dancing, and if you look at um, ballet performances, it looks nice, and you have to feel light, yeah. and it's, sorry, hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to sacrifice so much, yeah. so much. I did, and I remember there was a guy in our class who, bless his cotton socks, he, ha he actually had these feet that turned in this way, and uh, he would come to the class, again, he had come because it was fun, it was part of the programme, and he just wanted to do it, and there was no seriousness in it. And she had us doing this exercise where we were supposed to be leaping across the room like gazelles. Yeah. Well, I mean, we were like a herd of elephants. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, because, you know, his feet kind of did this when he was walking, so, you know, I mean, he literally, he would do these leaps and jumps, and he would be killing himself laughing. And so we were laughing with him, not at him, and I just remember one day, she literally, I don't know what she logged us, but she threw something and she's like, how dare you laugh at someone in my class? It's like, we're laughing with him, not at him. And that's the whole, and that was, that was the final straw for me. I thought, I'm not doing this anymore. He, we were all having a wonderful time and she just put a complete damper on it. So yeah, that was it. So there was a few months of ballet. It's funny the thing about people having inhibitions about dance as well, isn't it? It's, I remember, I used to love going dancing, and I know you did as well, but you used to always have to get drunk before yes. I'd go out. Yeah. I'd just be yeah. yeah. And I'd have to wear heels. There was something about dancing oh, in flat yeah. shoes that it just didn't work. No, but you know what it is? is? When you're on high heels, because I, I worked this out, it took me a long time to work it out, it's way more efficient, because actually, you can just wobble your heels. Yes. <laughs> you wobble your ass, and then... <laughs> And it, you teeter on the shoe, it look a bit and so there's a whole lot more movement that happens rather than being actually grounded on these flat mm. shoes. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was just more efficient in the dietary. Much more efficient. And yeah. 
Yeah, definitely <laughs> took away the ambition. But I love now how they've got all the uh, the day clubs, like Morning yes. Glory, Daybreaker, those things. And I prefer it because I don't really want to go out and get drunk and all those kind of seedy no. clubs no. where someone's always trying to hit on you or mm. yeah, it's all a bit smelly. Now, I th- is that just my age? <laughs> Possibly. Possibly Maybe. your age, yeah. Maybe my age. <laughs> I mean, I still have to kind of mix it up a little bit, but it is mm. great to go to places um, where you're not. But this quite, is interesting. Yeah, drinking. Oh, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> I remember when you're going out and you just want to dance and to express yourself. I feel always so vulnerable mm. because I think either they see me, they think I'm stupid, or somebody will want to be with me. Mm. You know, I don't. I yeah, I don't feel like I'm afraid of really showing myself. Mm. You know. But actually, if you if I keep dancing and I don't drink, then I loosen up and then I just do it, no matter yeah, what. And then right. you're in this flow, yeah. and it's beautiful. Yeah. And yeah, it takes a while. Yeah. Yeah, it took me a long time to realize, having spent many of my younger years drinking, and then being throwing myself out, being the first one on the dance yeah. floor always, and the last one to leave. Mm-hmm. But I thought I needed the alcohol yeah. to actually make me dance better. Mm-hmm. But because I don't think I'd ever actually dance without alcohol. Mm-hmm. It was a real shock to the system when years and years and years later, going to, a, you know, an alcohol-free event, to like a, a trance dance thing, and thinking, oh my God, it's actually way easier to dance without alcohol without. because you're actually coordinated and you know yeah. what your limbs are supposed to be doing. It was amazing and so much better. Yeah. And the flat shoes too. And, and the flat shoes. When your feet don't move, it's way better. Yeah. All barefoot. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> not in a club. <laughs> <laughs> not, no, 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 club. not in a club. Not yeah. in a club. But that's why things like five rhythms and yeah. ecstatic dance and all those places that are more of a meditation through dance, where it's actually movement therapy. And so there's no chatting on the dance floor. Mm. Everybody is there for the right reason. It, you are safe to leave your shoes off. Dance with your eyes closed. Yeah. It's great. And do yeah. whatever you want. And again, it takes out that judgment thing where there's no... You know, people can just run around on the floor or jump up and down on the spot or just bounce mm. up and down if they want to. Mm. There are no rules about how you dance. So no one's looking at you as to say, oh, you know, they got the moves, and, mm. but they not got the moves. It's just absolute free to do what you want. And there's a real liberation in that. that there's no, you know there's no judgment whatsoever. Mm. Yeah. Which is like alcohol. <laughs> because when you when you do when you have been drinking alcohol, you do get to that point where you do do what you want, yeah, yeah. dance wise. So yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. I have no sober dance stories to share. With you. <laughs> I have one classic: uh, having been drinking all night and gone to a late night club. Yeah, dance story to share. Which was everybody is kung fu fighting. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and we were on a stage at the front um, because we've been drinking, so why not be on the stage? And as everybody was kung fu fighting, my friends and I all turned and kicked. I really hurt somebody. <laughs> <laughs> they were lower than me, and I got them in the temple. <gasps> in the temple, and um, yeah, that was kind of the end of my dance. <laughs> oh, on stage. <laughs> But yeah, really actually oh, no. hurt somebody with a high heel coming at them oh, from six foot two. So... Mm. Oh, God, yeah, that would really be is dangerous, dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> so closing your eyes and dancing, not an option. Yeah, no. Nobody was kung fu fighting after that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but you talk about you know going to places and being chatted up. I always remember years ago when I used to go out with my girlfriends, we kind of had this code that if, because back then, I think it's, maybe it still happens, I'm not sure, I'm not really that clued up in clubbing nowadays but guys would quite often if they wanted to chat you up get to know you they wouldn't actually chat to you they'd just come up behind you oh yeah and start dancing behind you oh, and kind of getting into your space yeah. so we nicked them it named them backpacks <laughs> it's like you've got a backpack, right so then obviously nobody knew what we were talking about and at that point and i'm showing my age now i'm really showing my age because we would then turn into pan's people and Pan's people used to be the backing dancers <laughs> on top of the pops, and they were very elaborate, and it was all very, it was kind of 70s and 80s, so it was all very, you know, big. And we would get sharp elbow Pan's people, so I would start doing a lot of dancing that involved this. And so, <laughs> like, you wouldn't have it, but it was brilliant, because you didn't have to reject the person formally, you didn't have to look just at them and go, go away. Just no, it. we would just make it so that it became very uncomfortable for them to stay in that spot, because <laughs> we were kind of dancing like this. <laughs> 
<laughs> but actually, the best one, one of the funniest things that we used to do when we used to go up dance when I was young, and this is very naughty, and I do realise that it's really bad, and I'm sure karmically it's going to all come back at me. But have you ever had that thing where you're dancing, and actually, if there's a lot of people that are really c kind of committed and you're all doing the same thing, other people around you tend to start doing it. Mm -hmm. And one of our favourite things to do, particularly if it, if it was a night when it wasn't overly a great night, was to start dancing out of time to the music. Yes. Which is actually yes. really hard to do. Mm -hmm. So we would all start to, so we'd all just put in these like little kind of jerky movements and, and then just really dancing very, very badly and then wait and then just watch what was going on. And it was really bizarre because people around you would actually start doing it. <laughs> Especially if you were doing it with confidence, you know, you were doing these kind of funny steps <laughs> with absolute conviction. Totally and it would actually, it. And, and then we'd leave, yeah. then we'd kind of creep off somewhere else and then just carry on dancing. And you'd see this whole wave of this really odd dancing that was going on. I'm sure that will come Trending right now me. on... <laughs> I mean, there's going to be younger people yeah. watching us going, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> We've become those people. <laughs> no, but actually, it also shows the momentum which is created when you dance yeah. on your own mm -hmm. with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you feel awkward or people also start to move out of tune, it's cool. You know, you're one. You yeah. know, it's like a wave. Yeah, and right. obviously that was a long time ago. I wouldn't do that now because obviously I'm way more conscious and then, <laughs> way more aware now but I think dancing is it, well, it is liberating mm. yeah. I think completely we, we ran a retreat in Ibiza last year and as one of the um <laughs> the, the fight was the final exercise was it was one, one of, of the final exercises yeah. we did a, a like a five rhythms kind of thing with the group and we had about 15 people on this retreat and uh, many of whom well, like you know, not dancing, not doing it. Not doing it's not it. our thing. Not we did it as a journey through the chakras, didn't we? Yeah. We did. We did. We did have some cacao as well, just to loosen them up a bit. <laughs> but it was so not funny because in the beginning, like we we sat there the night before, we were up till like two o'clock in the morning planning the the like the playlist and everything. We were like, this is brilliant. It's brilliant. And I was like, when we first started, I was like, oh my god, like no one's getting into it. People were really reluctant. <laughs> People were like. Two stepping like this and kind of rolling their. By the end of it, everyone was going nuts, and then and then everyone went outside and they were looking at the stars twirling around. It was great. Yeah. It was like finally they kind of, and it really you could really see how they were actually journeying through their chakras, like the emotions that they were displaying. It was brilliant. Yeah, but also I think because we'd started off quite uh, quite gently hadn't we yeah we started off gently but I think what's the word I'm looking for it was quite obvious or not obvious it's like enforced dancing really uh, <laughs> but it was it's, it's cool trauma you all yeah, dance now but we not... predictable yeah okay, we started yeah. off quite predictable with quite spiritual yeah. quite ambient quite yeah. sort of gentle trancey music and I could see the eyes rolling a little bit like oh my god are we going to have to do an hour of this <laughs> and so in the mix we had deliberately chucked in some big dance Madonna uh, yeah. And <laughs> um, who was the. Um, what was the one that. <laughs> I can't remember now, but so just some really random tracks. Better drum and bass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just totally unexpected. <laughs> just to keep them on their toes. And it didn't Barry want, White. They didn't want to stop at the end then. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, and again, with music, it can change your state so mm. much. Big into music. Yeah. yeah, not big into dancing. You're just yeah. dancing in your head, honey. Yeah. yeah. But and I know that even in night class, soul was dancing. <laughs> <laughs> just <can't> <laughs> <see>. <laughs> no, Your etheric got... body's spinning around the room <laughs> right now. Oh, I have been into trouble so many times because the other thing I know about music is that I love to move and can dance to almost everything. But if there is music that I don't like, my body just won't move. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I can't make it. It's like literally just comes to a grinding halt. Yeah. And I have got told off before because I have gone up to DJs. Oh, you all said, excuse me, yeah. do you think you could put on something that we can dance to? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, yeah, that doesn't go down very well. Yeah, no, I'm the same. We have to leave the dance floor in disgust. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, who's going to be dancing us out? <laughs> yeah, any dance routines you're going to share with us, Lorraine? Lorraine, you're going to have to dance us out. I think she's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> well. Go on. You know you want no, to. No, but actually, no, but what I, I will say about dancing, the one thing that I cannot do mm -hmm. for the life of me is dancing in routines. No. I can't actually do it when someone's created a thing. That line and then you're like, yeah, not a line dancing. Oh my God, that just oh, doesn't work. Oh, it's a lot of Yeah. I moved out to Arizona for a while. 
and um, swing doors on the bars and tumbleweeds and <laughs> line dancing. Why not? Love it. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Oh, I know. Oh, no, I My London it. friends were like, you're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love a bit of waltzing and fox trotting and tango and stuff. Oh, so yeah. that's my favourite. Oh, no, I used to love doing the Macarena. Oh, oh you see that? No, I can't. I we can't. used to dress my little brother up in a wig and like a dress when he was about four and make him do the Macarena. <laughs> That's Connie. cruelty. We nicknamed him Connie. <laughs> Connie, do the marriage. He had four sisters. Come on, he was the baby. We, sorry, John. Yeah. <laughs> you can you get hypnosis to get over that. So. <laughs> <Traumatized>. <laughs> He's got great rhythm, though. Anyway, I think now we're getting a bit weird. That's all right. Time. We're <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe dancing starts with the movement. You're dancing in your head, you, mm. and then you have a song, and you just start to move. Yeah, and maybe that's that's what it's about, you know. Yeah. You don't have to go crazy and yeah, absolutely just feel the music inside of you. Just move to the music. So thank you for watching. Yes, thank you. Awake you. ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>